Alright, so we talked about a lot of this carb cycling and we talked about training schedules and whatever. Uh, I recently launched this Jay Cutler Club and it's a membership club. So if you guys haven't checked that out, go to cutlerclub.com and you'll see that, uh, you know, we have, you know, monthly, yearly memberships there and that kind of puts together programs for everyone. We do diet, everything. I do live every two weeks, which is coming up actually this Tuesday. So I don't know when this video is going to be launched, but every two weeks I get on the the, the group live and I answer questions personally um, myself so uh, but we'll talk a little bit about the carb cycling which I call the zigzag dieting I wrote about this years ago in my CEO muscle book which is sitting around here somewhere I don't know where it is but uh, yeah right here. So if you guys have a copy of this book I talked a little bit about this is my original book written in 2004 and I have all the diet stuff in here so I have all the this is my training book and it was catered after Bob Paris's Beyond Built book, which I bought at 16 from GNC, which is how I learned about training and obviously working with some of the best nutritionists, including Chris Aceto, was the guy who wrote up my diet when I was 18 and I put it on my refrigerator and that's how I started kind of learning right away six months into training. But here's an example of my of, of my best ideal training schedule, okay? So I know it's hard to read. Day one, chest and calves. Day two, arms, which is buys and tries. Day three is back, okay? The fourth day would be off. Delts and traps on day five, and then day six would be legs. And it always follow, if you notice, back day and leg day always come with a day off, okay? And the reason I did that is those are the two most volume training thing. And I also have my, my book out there, my volume training book. If you aren't subscribed to the J-Mail, Dave put the link on right here for the free newsletter. This is free. Now, I also have an ebook which is about volume training. So, if you guys don't know anything about my volume training principles, the ebook also has a link right here. Okay, so you'll add that link. And so, what ideally this routine is, it's a three on, one off, two on, one off schedule. Okay. And the reason I did it this way, I grouped one body part each day so I consider back um, one day you know arms buys and tries I still even though it's considered two body parts or quads and hamstrings for legs I still consider that like one body part because it's basically a whole muscle area right so this ideally was my best schedule ever and the reason it worked well for me is when I did tra train and diet for the shows this was always my training pr uh, protocol for the Mr. Olympia and Arnold Classic uh, training schedules because okay because I did what I call the zigzag diet rotation so what I basically did is we all know protein and carbohydrates have the same amount of calories it's four calories per gram right so what I always tended to do okay where people say macros and whatever else they count what they're eating right I always took in you know the same amount of calories each day it's just that the source is switched now listen, I never paid attention to fat, okay? I only took fat resources only from my natural foods, which would be my chicken or my beef or my whole eggs that I had in the morning, two whole eggs always every morning. But I never added fat ever in my routine until like the very end of my training uh, as I got older. Um, but I'm not even going to go into that because it's, it's a little confusing, but I never added fat. So no... No almond butter, peanuts, no oils, anything like that. It was not necessary for me. I was able to win the Mr. Olympia doing it that way. Uh, and it just how my body worked. We all have reactive uh, ingredients that make us better, right? So what I tried to do um, is I would basically, remember, this is the protocol that I followed. I, you can't just go low carbs all the time. And that's a misconception. I, I get people writing to me every day. Um, and they talk about, hey, you know, I'm on this low carb diet. Well, listen, every fourth day you need higher carbs. So I'll give you an example of how I would do how I would do this. Okay, so so let's just say I was trying to lean down a little bit. Okay, so I would do, uh, you know, uh, you know, moderate carbs on certain days. This would be a high day, and back and legs would always be a high day. Okay. These are low. Okay, so I'm going to show these in a second. Let me just write it. High. High. Okay, so you have two, so you have seven days a week, okay? So your off days are always going to be low carbs. So meaning 
These days your protein would basically be like this, okay? If I was 300 pounds, I would take in 300 grams of protein a day, okay? Now, when I was trying to get, you know, a, you know, decent carbs, I think two to three times your body weight is, a, is essential, like, carbohydrates. When you're trying to put on, ma on mass, I would suggest three times your body weight. So, on an average day, I would take in a thousand, like, 900 grams of carbs to a thousand grams of carbs. That would pretty much be my higher day. And then I, I consider low carbs, I mean, I would double my, basically do be at 600 grams, okay? My super low carb days, like my off days, I would maybe eat 400 grams a day. So that's really how I kind of paid attention to what I did. So I have three different days a week. So basically high, low, medium. And always on those two days I was off, I would be at the 400 grams of carbs. But my protein would be a little higher, okay? So what I would do is if I take the calories from the carbohydrates I normally got, which is the four calories per gram. If I ate 6,000 calories a day, okay, say, you know, X amount came from, I'm not even going to include the fat because I never really paid attention to the fat. So I would basically try to eat moderate to moderate, okay? So half the calories <clears throat> would come from protein carbohydrates, right? And of course, the fats would make up the extra. So let's just say, let's just say 300 grams and 300 grams, whatever, on an average body. What I would do is on my low carb day, the protein would go up to replace those calories. So if my protein went up to like 400 grams and my carbs dropped down to maybe like 150 or, you know, even 100 grams, the protein has to go up. So you get that sway. OK, same thing when the when the carbohydrates go way high to 900 grams. Shoot, I could drop down to, you know, 100 grams of, of protein that day really you know you don't really need because your body is going to be shocked on okay what source is this coming from so there's always that sway what you basically want to do is keep the calories the same and that's the problem with people when they go oh i'm going to go low carbs they keep everything else the same and they don't get enough protein right because your protein still has to you know it has to be a little higher so if you're going to drop your your carbohydrates down but you've got to find that balance so I always follow that and everyone kind of overeats that, but I can be honest with you guys. I was, you know, 270 ripped, 260. I never took in a lot more than 300 grams of protein a day. Wow. I mean, there were a lot of days that I would, wouldn't even eat that much. I mean, towards the end of my career, like I said, I ate a little different because I started adding some fats and stuff in there. But I mean, shoot, I would only eat 50 grams of protein per meal. Um, and I would eat six meals. I mean, that was my diet protocol. That's what Chris would always put me on. And then I try to get a hundred grams of carbohydrates per meal. And then maybe for breakfast and after training, those might go to two or 300 grams per those meals. I think it's always great to spike your breakfast and spike your meal after training with a lot of carbohydrates. Okay. Especially if you're trying to gain mass, even when you're dieting for a show, even when you're doing your, your higher carb days. Remember, those should be your highest calorie dense meals. So really just focus on that. You know, it's probably better if I charted it out um, because people would understand a little more. But I do have more of that that coming on a nutrition ebook that I'm going to be releasing here as the spring rolls around because people getting ready for the summer. So I'll get in a little more in depth on that kind of stuff. But, you know, my pro protein carbohydrates was all, listen, I use powders. I used egg whites, I used fish, I used chicken. I, di I didn't eat a lot of beef when I was trying to lean down, although off season I would eat tons of beef and pasta. That was my main thing. So if you guys try to put on mass, beef and pasta is awesome. Chicken and pasta is awesome. Pasta, you can sit there and get 100 grams of pasta, no problem. Anyone can eat that. I mean, that's like, so two ounces is like 40 grams of carbs. So, I mean, four ounces, I mean, you get a lot, right? So... You, you want to take in, I mean, I would eat five pounds, of, five ounces of pasta every single meal when I was really put on mass, when I was doing the golf course maintenance, all that stuff. But, you know, I don't, you know, eating on a budget, I understand there's budget sometimes, but I would just try to, you know, I'd cook my chicken on the grill in the morning and I would just put it in the fridge and I'd cut my meals as the day went on. I'd just have to cook my pasta or I'd make my dishes ahead of time and I would just put them in a plate with cover them with saran wrap. But pasta was my main go-to. Obviously, when I leaned down a lot of fish, um, because it, it would go through you a lot faster, but less meats. So, you know, that zigzag diet approach, and I did, if you guys do have CEO muscle, refer to that book, but watch for this nutrition ebook that's going to be coming out. And I can get more if you guys have any questions with it. Um, 
you know, it's just about keeping the same amount of calories, but just changing the sources it comes from. And I know there's a lot of fad diets now. People have been doing a lot more fats. Uh, and I don't, listen, I, I'm toy with a little bit of fats, but I still pretty much eat the same. I stay away from a lot of fats. I mean, it's still fats. It's nine calories per gram, right? So when you start adding those, the calories go way up. If I was trying to put on size and you're a hard gainer, someone that's lean or, or just doesn't seem that you're eating sufficiently enough, you know, I would, I would try adding some fats in there. It's going to stunt your metabolism a little bit, but sometimes that's good because then your body, your body will stick the food a little bit better. But it's just more about the, the portion of meals, just keep eating. I always ate every two hours, uh, never waited three. Three was a little lengthy for me. Nowadays, I eat probably every three hours. But when I was training full tilt, my alarm was set for every two hours. And I was only hungry for a certain amount. I never actually uh, was like, oh my gosh, every two hours I need to eat, right? I mean, I'd be stuffing myself sometimes and, you know, the food became quite a bit, but... You know, remember, my body weight came down after the Ronnie Coleman era, too. So I, I felt like I was kind of overeating a little bit. And I think eventually it ends up going to your stomach and you get that little push out of your stomach. I mean, people could sit there and, and say, oh, it's many different reasons why we get bloated stomachs. But it's not really. I think a lot of it's just, you know, the fact that we overeat. You know, he's trying to get up here. So uh, we overeat too much. How come he has to join me in every video? What's up with that? You want some attention. So, you know, that's kind of like the zigzag approach. Um, I always suggest that if you're, especially if you're trying to lean out. But if you're going to start a 16-week phase, okay, I always, ex I always explain to people you should diet 16 to 20 weeks, no matter what the condition is, begin up because you get on track. Take the first, you know, two to four weeks to just eat on a specific plan, okay? Eat the same thing every day. And then you can start the rotation. Don't go right away into, okay, I need to start a diet and I need to carb cycling immediately unless you're going to crash diet. But I think the best thing to do is, you know, just stay on a consistent routine. Because remember, even your off days, you're going to need to repair. I was always doing massage therapy, which was like tons of like recovery time for me. And I was, you know, I was still doing my cardio my days off. So don't be afraid to eat. You just don't need a ton of carbohydrates on that day. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, I'm going to eat you know, a thousand grams of carbs on the day off, even though there was, as I got the diet going, there was a lot of days I ate a thousand grams of carbs because my body was just burning like a machine. And obviously the cardio is like, you want to do as less cardio as possible in order to get lean. Uh, let the diet kind of do the work and let the training do the work. Okay. So keep going. Who gave that to you? Dr. Zach. <laughs> you know, for you guys that don't know, the Olympia was named after... Joe Weider drinking a beer with, who's the first Mr. Olympia? Larry Scott was Larry the first Scott. one, right? Yeah. yeah. So he, they were drinking a beer, and they said, we want to come up with this contest, and it was that beer. How funny. It was that original can. No, <laughs> It'd be worth some money. I think that's pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, that was how the original name was made, you know? Wow. Some pretty cool historic stuff, though. NOC ring, which doesn't exist anymore. I know. Do you know that's the original case it came in? I'm sure. You never wore it, huh? Never wore it. How much do you think it's worth? Uh, they said it was worth five grand at the time. Oh, that's cool. I mean, it's going to be worth more now that the, it's the New York Pro now. And it's yours. Which I may go this year. <laughs> the three Hummer trucks, guys. Yeah, that's cool. So one, two, three. The bottom starts the first year. That was O two. Second one was O three, and O four was that yellow one. Although I, my Hummers were black, black. Actually, the second one was that color. It was called a pewter, huh. and then the third one was a uh, gun metal. Oh yeah, it was bluish or something. Yeah. yeah, that was the third one. So they gave me those trucks on stage before I actually. Uh, you know, before I had them built, which was cool. Yeah. I don't know why they gave me the most... I mean, look, is that even come out of the box? That, that no. That's from 02. Can you imagine that? It's mint. That was how many years ago? That was... Uh, oh, 2002. 17 years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 15 years ago. And the first one, yeah. The first one's... The first one would have been an H1? You never no, bought it. No, it was H2. All three H2. of them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Chris Gethin just gave me his, uh, his new book. Oh, right, Cool. So shout out to Chris Gethin. I have a thing in here. Let's show that strip too. Chris gave you. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, Chris gave me this strip. Yeah, that was cool. He actually made that. Was it for your birthday or what was it for? It was for a, kind of a thank you. He yeah. took this in 05. 
With Flex, Flex Lewis, Lewis was here, at the yeah. house, yeah. Remember my shoe collection we had, we thought was big. <laughs> we have to show that. People keep asking about your shoe collection. <laughs> yeah, that's the cool picture right there. That's the one we put in. You still need to get it signed. Yeah. Yeah. I mentioned it's the CEO muscle. You guys said shout out anyone that has this book. I know. Bring this to me so I can, uh, I can sign it for you guys. Yeah. I don't know where this came from, actually, because it has a... I don't know where, where it actually came from. I don't know if some e eBay. Right? <laughs> you bought it on eBay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favorite piece? A favorite piece in this you office? Know, you know my favorite cover. This one. Ah this yes. One. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be one of our YouTube. You know, if we we who our winners are. It's gonna be the famous giveaway. I'm giving this away. Okay, don't even have all the years on there. Uh, this is a this is gonna go on someone's wall and I'm gonna sign it. That's one of the giveaways. Nice. For you guys. So I this is all my stuff back here that people fathers and sons and Alpha Prime and uh, Dark yeah. Sport and People give you stuff all the time. Angie was throwing us across the room. <laughs> all right, let's awesome. Go.